Trini, you've said to me in the past that, that real innovation often comes from people on the edge. It's not just the, the white 19-year-olds who have dropped out of Harvard or Stanford. Absolutely, and, and the company I was telling you about, Pre-K-12 Plaza, Ana Roca Castro, it comes from her lived experience. She came to this country from the Dominican Republic. She was, I think, 14 at the time. She had taken, she'd already finished calculus in the Dominican Republic. She's a very bright person. She comes to Washington Heights in New York and they put her in fourth grade remedial math. And it was because she didn't speak English. And it was a volleyball coach who figured out how smart she was and how determined she was who figured this out. It has driven her to build a business um, we think it's going to be a billion dollar business, billion with a B. Uh, there's another woman, uh, African American, actually dual citizen US and Nigeria, woman in our portfolio who when <coughs> she came in and pitched and she said, I'm going to build the first billion dollar business in Harlem. We think she's going to do it. These are not trivial uh, pursuits and they come out of their lived experience. Me as a woman of, uh, actually I, I cross many intersections, I'm queer, woman of color, half Puerto Rican, half Korean. So I, I am certainly personally invested um, and have the lived experiences um, in terms of pushing these initiatives, initiatives through. And um, But you're in the education business. We really. are in the healthcare, healthcare business. But I mean, you're in the education in healthcare. You're yes, absolutely. So our mission as a company is to make sure that folks um, have access to health insurance, affordable health insurance, and a lot of that absolutely involves education. It's incredibly complicated. Um, this is the first time some folks are getting health insurance ever in their life, and they have this layer of complication with the law. So yes, we are absolutely in the trenches, um, but we feel like our mission is uh, stronger than ever now. So I w wonder if you could talk a little bit about some strategies you use with your, your teams um, to better understand users and that when you are working with an Uber CEO or other companies, how do you get them to empathize with their users and realize that they can't necessarily do that as well without having a, um, a certain kind of workforce? If you bake in diversity from the beginning. We have all of these founders whose lived experience reflects the user base. I mean, that's the best way to do it, right? Is to start with entrepreneurs who feel passionate about an experience they had. They know it represents a huge swath of the otherwise left out population and it generates an idea for a fabulous business. And whether or not, so for instance, we're investors in a uh, company started uh, by two gentlemen, uh, each with um, Latino family members in Los Angeles, Thrive Market. Some of you may know it. It is Whole Foods quality at Costco prices. It was done to fight obesity and diabetes in low income communities of color. And they gave a free membership to every Smash family and $100 worth of free food to every Smash family. They are working, they were in the Obama administration, working with the Department of Agriculture to get food stamps accepted online. If you didn't grow up in a family with food stamps, it would never occur to you. That's where you don't need to go to some frickin' $50,000 a year design school. You need to hire people who grew up on food stamps, who grew up homeless, whose family members or themselves were incarcerated, and ask them how technology can help their lives.